Get nice and close for me. Get creepy. Real creepy. Okay. So the number one person who I miss the most during quarantine, I mean my friends and my family and whatever, but mostly it's Joe Healy because he is responsible for my eyebrows. I know Zoe because I am a New York City based eyebrow specialist, but I've been doing lots and lots of virtual consultations. So I'm here to be your eyebrow guardian angel. What would you recommend that people have before they dive in? The spoolie brush allows you to kind of comb through and manipulate your brows to organize them and get them, you know, sorted out. The scissor for trimming and the tweezer for hair removal. Um, I also like these blades, these eyebrow razors. This is like the little secret weapon. Bring them uh, dangerously close to the camera and it should feel weird. So let's start by taking your tweezer and then pinching it together on the skinniest side. And then you're gonna wanna push it against the bridge of the nose, which really is that bone. We don't want the nostril edge, that's not very helpful. Often puts them too far apart. It's the bridge of the nose. So if we can go vertically on both sides, that's gonna be a great rule for where they should begin. So why don't you take your spoolie brush and go ahead and give that a comb up and get nice and close so I could see if there's any trimming potential in there. You can sneak snip with little tiny snips on the top, at least of the left one, of just like the three highest hairs. And it's just a little at a time. Just little snips. And that little guy who's kind of, yeah, bad her. Bye, girl. <laughs> one thing I will tell you is this area is the area that you're a little bit safer trimming in. You do want to trim less out here toward the tail. And then when you comb them more agreeably, which is kind of like up and over in a 45 degree angle, they should feel like they're lying down really well. Yeah, there's a couple on this side. Yep, just get the stragglers. And again, just snip the tip. But now the question is, are they level? Let's hold it like this and we'll sort of just relax the face and then let and make sure that the brows are relatively level. Let's go to the opposite end of the spectrum. Where should they end? Using a longer tool like your duo brow brush, corner of nose to corner of eye, that's a good place to kind of determine where they should end. So I'm a little overgrown at this like. Get nice and close for me. Get creepy, real creepy. Okay. <laughs> okay, so for you, I might just trim the very last hair just a little bit. I would say tweezers are a yes or a no, but scissors are a maybe, we're keeping a part of it. And if you're not sure about a hair, we leave it, that's the rule. And if you need to, sometimes I'll take this, the brow brush and push down all the tail hair and then just see if there's anything that's really too high before you comb the tail hair back up. So if you get close, you could see if there's on the top of that tail, if there's anything really sticking out that is kind of hiding, take it and then when you comb back up, it'll be cleaner. And then we do want to constantly kind of go from one brow to the next, left to right. I think it's advisable to do both brows at the same time. If not, you end up doing a lot to one brow and then sometimes it's hard to match. The thing I think we should do is fill them in a bit. Take the angled portion of your duo brow brush, dip in, no need to swirl, dive. Yep, just switch. And then give it a little tap as you start in the center. And then whatever's left on the brush should be in the front. We never really want to directly apply product to the front because it could look very harsh. Powder represents what, um, what ideal growth would be. Pull in those peaks, join together the tail. Another trick is if you have any brow highlighter, you could put it on under your brow. And wherever that highlighter is applied, you don't need that hair either. Oh, interesting. When you feel like the trimming is sufficient, try a little clear brow gel. And if clear brow gel won't make them obedient, then they get the scissor. That that's, is an eyebrow. That's perfect, look at that. That's what I call an eyebrow. One thing to note too is that we're just desperate to see straight lines, but it's hair and hair is kind of funky. So don't aim for like the perfect straight line, just for like the, impressionist painting straight line, where it's sort of at a couple of feet back makes a straight line. This is a great place to stop too, and I'll tell you why. They look equidistant, they look like <laughs> They look like they terminate at the same place and they have a distinct arch. No, I can't stop looking at them. I feel like they look really good. <laughs> they do, they look great. And this is really the safe place to be. And managing your expectations, uh, whether it's a maintenance thing or a virtual appointment is important because you're doing your job to keep them tidy, neat, organized, and relatively similar. Um, when you go to see a professional, they're sometimes a little bit more riskier and they'll get you a little bit further. I am here today with Ali Melnick from Flamingo, which is a home wax brand. And we are going to fix this 
overgrown stash situation that I can deal with. <laughs> Ever since we launched, I have been a major at-home waxer. I wasn't before. I've never tried it, so this is my first time. Why is it better to stick with waxing than to just turn to the razor? I think at the end of the day, it's kind of a personal preference, but the I think the ben the nice thing about wax is obviously it gets it out of the root so it lasts longer, a lot longer than a shaving, which kind of just like cuts it off at the top. There's this myth that it can grow back thicker if you shave or things like that. That's not true. So if you do want to try shaving, that's also an okay option as well. What are some things that first time home waxers should know before they get started? Just to make sure your skin is set up for success with it. You know, if you're on retinoids or retinols or using any products that are like sensitive for your skin, recommend just either talking to your doctor beforehand or stopping some of those products like a few days before. If you have any lotion or anything, one good idea is to like wash everything off. You've gotten this kit. The kit is so cute. Oh, because all the wax, I'm like, where's the wax? It's already on the strips. So that makes it so much easier. Both sides have wax, so you just want to find the edge and open it up. I like to do a little patch test on my arm if you're game for that. Sure. No one's seeing my arm. What you want to do is figure out which way your hair grows, and then you're going to want to stick it in the direction of the hair growth. And you're going to want to really rub it in in the direction of the hair growth pull in the opposite direction then. Okay. And it's all about mo going really fast and parallel to the skin. So not up, but like parallel. <laughs> One, two, three. How'd that do? We got some off. All right, let's do this. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna not wanna do it on the same area more than once. You're gonna wanna kind of figure out, this is gonna look funky, like how to get your skin like taut. So as you go in, you'll like wanna you don't want it like kind of wrinkly. Figure out like which way your hair grows. Oh wow, it's long. <laughs> okay, so it looks like my hair grows down. Is that weird? No, that's not weird at all. So actually I would use maybe the long way hmm. and then we'll do it like a couple of times. Like, <laughs> and then you're gonna want to rub it if it goes down, as I put it in my nose, rub it down. Okay. <laughs> And then you're gonna wanna pull fast and close to the skin and like oh, in the opposite direction. One, two, three. I got it. it. I had these like creepy long hairs growing out of the side and I got them. You can actually use the same strip a couple of times. So we recommend like up to even four times. You'll kind of feel it when it's not sticky anymore, but. Cool. Didn't hurt too much, right? Wow. Like, it's not that bad. I mean, granted, I've been getting my mustache wax for like 15 years, but right. I'm like, I can try and show this to the camera. Sorry, guys, if you don't want to see the hair that just came off of my lip, but white, it's in there. You want to do the post wax cloth, and it's really, this helps get rid of any stickiness from the wax that's left over, but then also starts to like calm and soothe. Yeah, this is going to change my life. Yeah, and then the calming serum. Amazing, and that's it. That took what? Two minutes. <laughs> so fast, so fast, so easy. Oh my gosh, I'm shook, that was awesome. So after all of that, I can honestly say I feel a lot more confident in what my face looks like. And I hope that you guys got to see that it really isn't that hard to bring these treatments home and do them on your own, um, especially when you've got a little guidance. So good luck, grab those tweezers, and in the meantime, subscribe to Well and Good and check back soon for another episode of Zoe Tracks.